everyone, it's Saturday. Time for another episode of Beyond Garnet. Let's get creative. Maybe too intense for some listeners. Maybe unsuitable for sensitive people. May cause dizziness. May cause drowsiness. May cause excitability. Safety goggles may be required for listening. Take with food. Avoid contact with skin. Avoid extreme temperatures and store in a cool, dry place. This is not legal advice. Must be present to end. Contents under pressure may contain small parts. Listen at your own risk. Hey everybody, it's Lana and I am here with a super amazing guest for you this beautiful Saturday morning. I have the lovely and talented licensed esthetician and professional makeup artist, Jessica Dunham. Hey guys. Thanks for joining me, Jess. Yeah. You worked on Dogwood. Uh Uh-huh. And boy, you had your hands full. You and Rhoda, 45 actors, I think, for hair and makeup roughly. Oh yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, and then also you, actually, Jessica takes care of my skin personally. So Mm -hmm. I highly recommend her. So let's jump right in. Who inspired you to do what you do? Honestly, probably my grandmother. Um, Okay. She always kind of took pride in her skin and how well she put herself together um, and kind of taught us it's not what you have, but um, how you take care of what you got. Started from when I was a little kid and teaching me how to take care of my skin and learning from her. She always had, you know, a vanity full of Chanel perfumes and things like that. And she grew up on a farm um, in a lot of poverty, actually. Took herself to the top, but at the same time, it was, you know, she always um, kind of taught me how to take care, of, take care of yourself and, you know, try the best things in life, I guess. <laughs> now, being on a farm, did she come up with any homemade organic facial treatments or... Not so, much, yeah. not so much for skin. I remember um, her making me drink white vinegar with Ugh. honey in it Ugh. for a uh, cough. That, that sounds dreadful. Oh, it was horrible. <laughs> um, she at least would warm up the vinegar. It made it slightly less abrasive. Okay. Um, but yeah, but I'll tell you what, it sure did work. Oh, wow. So was there a defining moment when you went, yeah, I think this is what I want to do. I want to go get licensed to be an esthetician. I would love to be a professional makeup artist. I want to make this a go for my career. Is there a defining moment for you that you recall? Um, I think it was probably after um, I had my son. I found myself, I... I wanted to be around creatives and creative people. Right. As well as being able to, you know, set my own schedule and live my lifestyle um, to where I could take care of my son um, and work with really inspiring people as well as still um, have my artistic side. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who is someone that you haven't worked with yet that you would love to work with? I'm sure you have a list. Everyone has a list. Who's at the top of that list? Well, I would love if I had the opportunity um, to work with Kevin O'Quan, who is a celebrity makeup artist. Um, He has actually passed away, so (laughs) I don't have the opportunity. Um, But he was actually one of the first celebrity makeup artists to hit the scene in the 90s. Oh, wow. So he was doing your Naomi Campbell's, your Drew Barrymore, Audrey Hepburn before she died. Basically made makeup artists on the scene or gave them a scene, I guess, yeah. a platform, um, to not only work in salons in department stores, this is before Sephora and Alta. He basically kind of created an industry, especially for film and fashion for the yeah. makeup artist. Yeah. So do you do a lot of fashion um, shows? You do you do the hair and makeup for a lot of shows or? Yeah, I actually found, you know, what goes hand in hand is the manufacturers that are producing like um, your high end Moroccan oils, your your hairsprays, your Aura Bay. Um, these hairstylists are the ones that are going to do the Grammys. The thing is, your high end stylists are going to be working with your high end clientele, which and inevitably are your celebrities right so a lot of times when we were going out to LA New York and Chicago and taking these courses these people are doing celebrity style they are celebrity stylists yeah 
they are the ones doing these manufacturers of these professional products are the ones doing the fashion shows like um, for Chanel, you know, yeah. for Ralph Lauren. Um, if you go backstage, you're going to see your celebrity stylist yeah. um, as well as your platform artist. Um, because in, in turn, they're all connected. Fashion goes hand in hand with the celebrity, with the manufacturer and the stylist. That's pretty wild. So, like I said, a lot of times at these larger events in New York, Chicago, and L.A., you're going to run into, you know, here, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, and out in L.A., you know, I ran into um, some stylists that we had done education for, for Schwarzkopf in Columbus, Ohio, mm -hmm. and, but he was, he was doing them, but he was at these educational conferences yeah. and these fashion shows, so they're all, you're all kind of running around in the same group. Sure. Um, uh, so yeah, it all, it all goes hand in hand, yeah. really. And that's, in that industry, it's a, there's a continuous learning in that industry with staying up on trends and what's hot. So do you find that something that inspires you and really keeps you engaged learning all the new stuff? Or does it kind of become a pain in the ass sometimes? Um, no, I never think it's a pain in the ass uh, because <laughs> basically, you know, you may have a certain technique um, of what you like or a certain product or brand. Yeah. You know, and you need to see what other people are using, how they like it, how it performs on film, how it performs on stage and high heat, um, especially with the HD cameras and everything with that technology always changing. It affects what products we use um, and how the skin looks on film. Yeah. Um, you know, they always say, you know, nine times out of ten, you're going to get rebooked for gigs based on complexion work. If you can make techniques and, and products is a big thing. And they're now with social media and all the, again, the manufacturers, they're producing stuff daily now. Right. <clears throat> now, I know that um, a lot of actors go through brutal treatment for their skin with so many days of shooting and so much makeup on and off. And I think that it's really important for actors to let their face breathe and take care of their face when they're not on set. And I think that's something that most actors don't realize. I think a lot of actors here locally don't realize that. So how important is skin care for an actor? Um, I think it's tremendous. I mean, even, you know, today working on, you know, doing some skin care for local talent, um, we discussed that, you know, you guys are, um, you're in the public. Not only are you being seen at events, but you're being seen on camera. Um, it's so important to, if you're keeping the skin in good condition, um, you're not going to have to wear a lot of makeup. It makes the job not only easier for the makeup artist, but you're going to look more healthy. Um, you're going to look more young on, uh, on camera, which in return is going to get you more gigs. Right. Absolutely. What was it like your first time on a, a film or commercial type set? Um... <laughs> It was fun. <laughs> I think it, like I said, I'd worked in fashion and tons of bridal. The commercial work is, uh, you know, it's kind of sit back and, you know, sit back and wait. They'll tell you how to do it. Yeah. So that was something I kind of had to adjust to. Um, but because of the guidance, um, to me, it was kind of fun because I saw things on camera that the producer sees or the cameraman might see that me as a makeup artist, I didn't notice. Yeah. So that teaches me how I need to use my product differently. Yeah. How hard is it for you? Because I know as a director, I struggle sitting down or going to a theater or watching a movie on Netflix because I'm scrutinizing it. Do you find yourself doing the same thing when you watch films and things, looking at the makeup and going, oh, why did they do that? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of heartbreaking, right? <laughs> yes, you know, and obviously that's someone's work and you don't want to criticize them, right, but right. there's a lot of things that could be corrected. Sure, so. yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you a collector of anything? Do you collect anything? <laughs> Um, yeah, so I've kind of currently run out of space for more of these, but I used to 
love to collect antique whiskey bottles. Oh. Um, a lot I can of... see how that could develop into a problem because bottles are so cool, especially old bottles. Yeah. Yes, and they if you go into like the old Jim Beam. Yeah. Um, and some of the old um, Kentucky distilleries from the early 1900s and everything, um, they get very, um, very detailed. Like I have some that look like um, it has a Boston Tea Party and it's in the shape of a book. Oh, wow. So you would put the books on the shelf so it looks like a library, but they're whiskey bottles. Oh, that's wild. And Very then, cool. Yep. And some of the old Jim Beam ones, they actually look like Greek vases. They're oh, beautiful. Wow. They're black, white, and clear. Like you would, like I said, it looks like a piece of art. Right. But needless to say, how many whiskey bottles can you have? <laughs> how many do you have? Do you know? Um, I mean, I only have about 10. And oh, that's okay. A, that's enough for now. <laughs> <laughs> no more collecting for the moment. Mm-mm. Now, what kind of hobbies do you have when you're outside of the set or... You're not doing makeup or you're not doing skincare. What's something that you enjoy doing? Um, I mean, I like to, I've always been a fan of um, art galleries. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I said, I have a lot of friends that are creatives. Yeah. So I love live music. We've always had a lot of friends that were musicians. Um, So going to live shows, going to art galleries, um, helping support them. I mean, I love a good old antique shop, things like that. I still love going to flea markets. There's a lot of great music in Columbus. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 21 Pilots came out. There's a lot of good folk bands. Camp is on the scene. They've been selling out shows all over the country. So, yeah. I mean, it's a good place to be. Yeah. Columbus is a fantastic city. Mm Mm-hmm. What quirks do you have as an individual? We all have them. I don't think we like to admit it <laughs> all the time. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a hard one. Yeah. Um, so, like, sometimes if I'm in a conversation and people are, obviously, they're talking, I will, like, match those words up to lyrics and songs, and then I start singing the songs in my head. So it's like a Broadway musical in my head, <laughs> which is kind of weird, but I do it. That's funny. Oh my goodness. I love it. What current projects are you working on right now? I have a large um, fashion. Actually, there's a fashion show coming up next month um, where we're working um, with Matrix and Paul Mitchell. And I love Matrix products. Mm-hmm. They're great. They've been around a long time. Um, they're trying to be a little more eco-friendly, so... Um, we're working with some national platform artists to um, basically create the looks to inspire some of the stylists, which, again, will help sales of the products. Yeah. Um, that's, like I said, all this stuff goes hand in hand, mm-hmm. yeah. um, as well as getting the high-end clientele. Um, I've got another gig in June. Um, we're looking at a script right now, which is pretty exciting. So we're trying to figure out the characters, um, what the looks, what the aesthetic is going to be. So I've Mm -hmm. been making notes, trying to figure that out. Um, and that, that takes a lot of time in itself. Um, cause like I said, each, each character can have a different aesthetic. That's a different design. That's a different makeup style. Yeah, and absolutely. What is something that happened in the past, a disappointment that still sticks with you? You know, I think a lot of times we do what other people want us to do or what other people think we should do. Um, and we put our passions on the back burner. Um, and we need to focus on our, our talent and how to kind of water that garden um, and surround yourself with people that believe in you and believe in your work. Um, and when you do that, things really, it's amazing how things um, kind of fall onto your lap. And I waited a long time to do that, years. Yeah. What is a big future goal that you have planned for yourself? You know, ideally, the thing is to be able to solely work in the art field while supporting, you know, my family supporting uh, my friends as well, kind of taking them along for the ride, I feel like. Mm-hmm. You kind of got to bring in the people that have helped you get to where you are. I yeah. think that's really important. 
but to be able to just continually grow um, project to project. Okay, so being in the fashion industry, you mm-hmm. know, a lot of people in that industry have a reputation for being divas or difficult. How true is that? Um, that's really true. <laughs> and really <laughs> the rumor is true. Yes. Yeah. And that's something that you, you know, after you learn to take that with a grain of salt. And right. that's the difference between working in film, fashion, corporate, bridal work is each personality is going to be drastically different. Right. Um, some people, this is the most important day of their lives and you've got to stay cool as a cucumber, no matter if they're a bridezilla or drama queen or whatever. Um, and then there's some, you know, designers or fashion, um, editors where, you know, you've got four minutes to do a full face and that slash included They're on the runway, get it done now. So you learn how to do a, a face really quick with that. Um, And, you know, at the time I hated that and obviously that was a lot of pressure, but I'm glad that I've had to go through that because it's, you kind of put up or shut up in those situations. Yeah. What is your opinion about um, false eyelashes? Do you love them? I mean, I do love them. Yes. Yeah. I myself am a picker. Like I like to, I'm a tactile person. Uh Uh-huh. So they're very high maintenance. Yeah. So I think they're wonderful for film, for formal events. I think they're a must. Photos, yeah. you need to wear them. It depends whether you want bands or individuals. Um, I myself couldn't wear individuals because mm-hmm. I, I'm constantly touching my face, sure. cleansing my face. Um, for some people, they're wonderful. I mean, they make a huge difference yeah. on film. Yeah. Um, but right now, you know, we refer to it as kind of like the Instagram industry Everyone is very, uh, it's over the top. So the natural look that was in 10 years ago, people don't want it. They don't want it to look natural. Mm -hmm. We were taught skin should look like skin. And a lot of people now, they, they want to see makeup. Yeah. You see these makeup tutorials that randomly pop up with people, right? The foundation that they're building on is so thick and so completely flawless and just insanely, insanely plastic looking. That that's not that's not what I think. Like as a director looking at my actors, I would never want them to look like that. No, and that's where you know that was something we were you know we had talked to some of the the artists in L.A. and they were saying these gigs were hiring these Instagram artists because they had a million followers, five hundred thousand followers, and. Um, but they had never worked on set. They'd never worked with talent. They've only done their makeup in their, their mm-hmm. studio in their basement. Yeah. And so they would hire these artists. They would do the talent. The talent would call their um, agent and just basically bitch them out. Lose their shit, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Because they've got white concealer yeah. under their eyes. They, are, they didn't mattify their skin. They're super shiny. That full face makeup, that Instagram makeup look is great. Um, it can look good in studio for editorial. It's amazing. I love yeah. it. I love doing it. Yeah. But in film or even, you know, face to face live, yeah. it does not translate well. Absolutely. So that's been something we, <laughs> you know, not all makeup artists know. That whole trend of hiring people because they have a shit ton of followers sticks me right in the gut so bad. I think it's like one of the worst things that you can possibly do. I get it. You're gonna get more eyes on your project if they share your stuff. It just, I I hate that trend. You know, kind of what they were saying, like I said, when we were in LA, but kind of told us, I hate to refer to us as old school, but you know, stick to your guns, keep your networking, work on your social yep. media because we have to. It's a necessary um, evil. Yep. We were doing this way before the social media even was a thing. Right. Um, we did referrals based on who we knew, our work, our talent. And like you said, Lana, right now um, people are getting gigs based off off of that and not talent. Yeah. So. I think the big thing is to stay close to um, your community, 
networking, it's a must to go to the events. Um, you have to. You have to be out and you have to be seen. Yeah. That's a big part of um, part of this industry. So my favorite question, we've come to my favorite question <laughs> in the interview. What is your favorite type of cake? Okay, so this is called Watergate cake. Okay. And I still I'm not sure why, but <laughs> it's um it's delicious. So it's pistachio, like pistachio pudding, yeah. and you mix it with vanilla cake mix. Uh-huh. And then so it's actually like mint green. Uh-huh. And then the topping is I believe pistachio jello pudding and cool whip okay. and you whip it. So it's very Light and fluffy and airy. Uh -huh. And I don't know why it's called Watergate yeah. Cake. <laughs> but it's really yummy. Oh, yeah. So good. Yeah. Do you make this? Mm-hmm. You do? Okay. Yep. I'm going to need a Watergate Cake one day. For sure. I'll bring <laughs> it next time with your facial. <laughs> Here. Here's a bunch of sugar with your facial. That's right. No glycolic peels. We're just going to eat our gly glycemic there today. <laughs> What would be your advice to listeners who are interested in skincare or being a professional makeup artist? Um, you know, as I mentioned before, I think the biggest thing is to surround yourself um, in the right community with um, people that have been doing this a while, people that you can learn from. Um, go and get your go and get your license, get your certifications. Um, go get post and secondary educations, um, invest in it. Um, I was talking about this with, with someone today, how people are wanting to, um, pay for courses online or not pay in person anymore for education because they can get this information online. Right. Um, you need to travel, you need to mentor under people. Um, that's the biggest, that the biggest thing I think it's so important. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, like I said, surround yourself with people who are doing it, living it, and that can network with you, um, to get the gigs, to get the opportunities, the education, yeah. um, to work in the industry. Mm -hmm. What is something that people can do for their skin nutritionally? What is like one of the big things people can do for their skin nutritionally? Big thing, and this is kind of like a duh moment, but <laughs> <laughs> drink water. Yeah. So we are, you know, if we're dehydrated, we're going to show that on camera. We're going to mm -hmm. show that on film. Not only is the makeup not going to lay right, but literally you can look ill. And mm -hmm. it, a lot of times that can be um, changed in a matter of, hours depending on you know your water intake mm -hmm. uh what vitamins you take um you know we all have stress but try to kind of take a breather whether yeah. it's um yoga or something but that will translate onto your face onto yeah. your skin um so water vitamins spf and exfoliate that's your big things and your okay. and keep your fruits and vegetables yeah um your body actually absorbs um water from fruit like on a cellular level from plants uh -huh. more than it does um from just drinking it so it's interesting yeah get your antioxidants it repairs the cells so oh, wow. fruit veggies spf water and exfoliate <laughs> in a nutshell <laughs> <laughs> i love it what is your one product that you cannot live without Oh man, that's a hard one. Got about <laughs> ten of them. Um, I love hyaluronic acid. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could bathe in it, that's one of my favorite ingredients. Um, for skin, I really love um, the Obagi, the ten percent vitamin C. It's they have ten, fifteen, and twenty percent. It's going to be a really strong antioxidant. It's going to brighten your skin, as well as. Um, using products that contain retinols, whether it's a tretinoin, which is a prescription strength, or um, retinol to hide. Um, there's all different forms, so that's where you would want to consult your esthetician based on your skin type. Um, but get in your vitamin Cs, a good retinol, and uh, an SPF, 
And there's so many different types of SPFs on the market now, mm -hmm. so many different price points. Um, there really is a lot of good ones. So yeah, um, I love, like I said, the vitamin C Obagi is probably one of my top, top ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. If somebody is on a really, really strict budget, what is the best moisturizer they could get? What would you, well, I know you, you wouldn't want to do it constantly, mm -hmm. but if someone was in a pinch with their budget, what would be a great moisturizer? Probably your Cetaphil's or your CeraVe. Okay. Um, CeraVe used to be pharmaceutical only, so you would have to get that at the dermatologist. I think probably about 10, 15 years ago, it went over the counter into Walmart's targets. Do you think their quality changed when they did that? Mm. Or is it the same product? We didn't notice a huge change okay. in the reformulation. Yeah. So, and for the price, um, it's going to put the moisture in. Um, they're not going to be irritating, and it's mm -hmm. going to do the job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. There's a big, like, well, I don't think it's just recently. It's been for a little while now. A big push with CBD. Mm hmm What do you think about that? I mean, I think it's great. I think it's great to use it topically. Um, I believe it's great to ingest it. Um, there's so many different forms of it now that, you know, are not going to contain THC, um, that are a pure blend. Um, they're anti-inflammatory internally, um, as well as for the skin. So I think it's a great option for yeah. people. Mm -hmm. So if people wanted to find you on social media, where would they find you? Or do you want them to find you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Once again, working on my social media because I'm old school. Um, if you have been to me or I've treated you, please leave a positive comment and, and share. Um, yes. But I am on Instagram and it's actually Yabba Artistry, Y-A-B-A-R-T-I-S-T-R-Y. And that stands for You Are Beautiful Artistry. That way you don't have to type too much because I know that's annoying as well. Um, <laughs> but you can find me there and on uh, Facebook as well under my name. So, um, but yeah. So, and I'm constantly trying to get the social media thing going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're looking for fashion shows and feature films and TV series and you've got extensive knowledge in all of those areas. So mm -hmm. people, if you're looking for an amazing professional makeup artist, Jessica is your girl. Oh, thanks lady. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. Well, being a professional makeup artist, um, speaking in terms of film, who are some actors or actresses that you would love to get a chance to do makeup on? Okay. So I would Love to have the opportunity to work with Scarlett Johansson. Oh, yeah. I Not only is she beautiful and done a lot of ad campaigns um, for cosmetics and all over, but I, I feel like she seems like a very genuine, cool person. Right. Um, Jennifer Lopez as well. Scott Barnes is her makeup artist, and uh -huh. he's been in the industry um, as long as Kevin O'Quan. Uh -huh. He's been doing it since the 90s. Um, and he does amazing work. Yeah. And she's the perfect canvas. Sure. But yeah, I mean, you there's... You know a lot of men that would agree with you on that uh, After the Super Bowl, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Charlize Theron as well. She has a really beautiful look to her. Yeah. Um, I think she can go very um, cinematic. She can look really rough, too, yeah. which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, with her bone structure. Those would probably be my top three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you ever pass someone in a grocery store or on the street and you look at them and you see their bone structure, their face and go, oh, I would love to put makeup on that person. Yes, all the time. And, you know, th those are the moments when I'm like, shoot, why do I not have my business cards on me? Because sometimes it'll be the barista at Starbucks yeah. that you're, I mean, just stunning. They're beautiful. And, you know, even if you're just doing a quick editorial or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I get, so yeah, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like watching the movie and <laughs> editing in, <laughs> in my brain. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> we all love to go to rap parties and we all like to go to dinner and go out on dates and have a drink and a glass of wine. And then you have two glasses of wine <laughs> or, you know, you go to a premiere and then 
there's an open bar or you're having drinks or doing shots with your friends because you're excited about the film. How bad is alcohol for the skin? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking for me, not for a friend. Pre, pre or post filming. Um, so that's probably one of, to be honest, probably one of the biggest no-nos. If you yeah. know you are going to be on camera within really truly 48 to 72 hours, um, just uh, stick to your green teas, your kombucha, your water, um, even your juices. So juices and alcohol, uh, a lot of sugar. They're going to be a right. lot of um, inflammatory yeast yeah. and beer, good IPA, all that stuff. It's going to make your skin puffy and dehydrated. You know what's great about being a director? Oh. None of that applies to me because I'm not in front of the camera. I know, you lucky dog. We're <laughs> drinking our Dasani. It's not fair. <laughs> Well, Jessica, this has been awesome. I had so much fun chatting with you. Mm -hmm. Everybody is going to like absorb all of this knowledge. And every actor that I know who is listening <laughs> to this, I better not catch you with a glass of wine in your hand 48 hours before you have to film. You better be carrying your skincare products around with you. Listen to Jessica. She knows what she's talking about. You can blame it on me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for having me, Lana. This you is are wonderful. Welcome. Okay, guys, join me next weekend when I will be chatting with the iconic Jack O'Halloran. All right. <laughs> thank you, guys. See you next week. Big shout out to Kevin McLeod over at Incompetech for our super slick theme song, Jet Fueled Vixen. And a big shout out to Michelle Lawson for our super amazing disclaimer.